Okay, here we go. All right, so now we're going to show the pervasiveness of covenant. Everyone can see that, correct? It's clear for everyone to see. All right, so we're going to go. I have 13 or 14 different passages of scripture. I've just chosen one passage of scripture, and we have a summary statement, and we'll just highlight a couple of things. We'll move pretty quickly here. But I want to show you how often and how fundamental covenant is used. So, number one, God creates and maintains a covenant with his created order. Let's look at Jeremiah 33, 19 to 22. Here we go. This is powerful here, okay? The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant, so there's a, a covenant going on here. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that the day and night might not come at their appointed time, then also my covenant with, my, with David, my servant, may be broken. There's a relationship going on here, okay? So there's, <laughs> there's, there's this covenant, my covenant with the day, my covenant with the night, and then he's referring to the covenant with, with David, his servant, okay? What's incredibly powerful to notice here is that God has a covenant with day and night. Does everyone see that? Now, this is where we have to be really careful with covenant. This is not, it's not as if day and night are being personified for sure. But in this sense, covenant, covenant can mean different things. In this sense, covenant is taking on the aspect of within, within a covenant, we'll see later, there are stipulations, there's requirements within any government, okay? So we could also say if, if we're talking about stipulations or, right, so... Uh, agreements or um, ordinances. This is essentially law, right? This is this is a, this is law or commandments, okay? And so, of course, night and day is not a person, right? It's not a being. But what's being stated here is that there is a, a law that has been set up. Natural law has been set up. The day and night they come, but the way by which that relationship that's being described is covenant. So that's why the we Westminster Confession says that God condescends with his creation. In, in, in that particular context, it's referring to man. But God relates to his creation through the, through the relationship of covenant. And you can see it right here. If you can break my covenant with the day, if you can break my covenant with the night, so that there will be no more day or night. So, th so th the law of day and night has been broken. Then you can break my covenant with my servant, David. This is a comparison relationship. What's fundamental is the idea of covenant. That's the relationship. That's how it's described. Everyone's tracking there with me. And then he also brings up, <laughs> he also brings up the Levitical priest. <laughs> strong, very strong. So for sure, we will get into the weeds in two weeks here. Okay. But next week's the covenant of redemption. But right now we're just focusing on the pervasiveness of covenant. So we know in the created order, God relates to the created order beyond man through covenant. So the application could be in any, all his natural law, he's relating to all this creation through the idea of covenant. That would be a, a, an appropriate inference, a theological statement. Okay. Number two, God makes a covenant with Adam. So this is hotly debated, right? People will deny that there is a covenant with Adam because covenant is not men mentioned in Genesis 1, 2, or 3. In fact, covenant isn't mentioned until Genesis 6. And so we will, we will discuss that at length when we get to that, to that covenant. But suffice to say, Hosea 6, 7. Hosea 6, 7 is quite explicit. Like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. So there is a, this is, this is Israel. Israel broke. This is the action. Israel broke the covenant. They dealt faithlessly with me. Okay. So then this, this here is another action. And this is the opposite of faithful, right? This is the opposite of faithful. So they were not faithful to my covenant. They were, they were faithless. 
So that's that's a component of the covenant to be faithful to the covenant or to or to be or to break the covenant. Okay, the critical point point for us here is this comparison. This is a comparison here, like Adam. So if, if there's a comparison going on here, then Adam had to also be in covenant with God. Does everyone see that 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 parallel there? If Israel transgressed like Adam, then Adam had to be in covenant. And so although there is no explicit place where it says God made a covenant with Adam, it's it's clearly inferred here. And uh, we see that clearly God does have, he is in covenant with Adam, which Adam broke. While the, the Mosaic law is not a complete republication mm. of the covenant of works, but the covenant of the Mosaic law yeah. certainly reflects, this is what I, 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 I said when we were talking, yeah, yeah. certainly reflects the inability of man to perfectly obey yeah. God, most especially after the fall. So in some sense, it's not a perfect republication, but somehow it mirrors uh, the, the inability, the part of man's inability yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. No. So let's 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 draw this out here. Let's draw this out here. So, so Adam. So we have a comparison going on here. So, to be clear, Adam transgressed God's covenant. Israel transgressed. I I, I would say no for sure that for sure there's a comparison here. But even with the new covenant, the new covenant, we could also say, we could also say that that occurs as well, right? In some sense, we could add the new, we could add the new covenant there as well, right? Because there would be those that are, that will be inside the covenant, right? So, so looking at the, the specific requirements of the covenant to have faith, you're in the church, however we see that, but, but we can also break the new covenant as well. So yeah, I wouldn't want to use republication. And I think we'll come back to that. We can definitely use comparison, right? So there's a comparison there. There's a, there's a relationship there. Republication is really a strong word, but let, how about this ending? Let's hold your, hold your comment. I, I, I agree. Let's, let's, so let's look at, so there's discontinuity and continuity going on here, right? Let's come back because so there's definitely between Adam and Israel, there is a continuity, right? There is a continuity, there is a comparison, and, and it's in agreement, right? Both of them fail. So, so these two are it's a it's a positive. I'm not saying positive as like it's good, but it's both of them broke it, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. but so so then but that let's also look though then at how these are also. They're also dis dissimilar. So let's 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 track with that. Okay, um, really good question, really good comment. I'm really glad. Let's go now to to Genesis nine eleven. So we've looked at creation covenant, Adam covenant, right? Uh, God confirms His covenant with Noah. So look at the passage here with Noah, and I I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall flesh be cut off from the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make with between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. So this is Henry's comment, right? Who does the covenant apply to? In Noah's case, it was for everyone. It's for all creatures. It's, it's for you. It's for all future generations. So let's just hi highlight this here. This is between Noah and God. It's, it's, it's you, every living creature and all future generations. And I have set my bow in the cloud. It shall be a sign between me and you on the earth. So this is more of, this is an assurance. So we now, we now are talking about a sign of the covenant. This is a, but the, but the purpose here for all of us to see is that this covenant covers. So let's be clear this. Let's be clear who this covers. This covenant covers all mankind and all creatures. So again, when we're looking at comprehensive framework, 
Is it dispensationalism? Is it new covenant? You know, whatever it is, it should be covenant, right? This is, this is comprehensive. This is not small. This is huge. So God confirms his covenant with Noah. Let's look at the next one. So now we're going to go to, to Abraham. God confirms his covenant with Abraham. So let's look at what he says here. And God said to him, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of a multitude of nations. The covenant agreement is with Abraham. So party one is God. Party two is Abraham. My covenant is with you. You shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall you be called Abraham, but you shall be called Abraham, for I made you a, fa a father of multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and will ma make you into nations. Kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring and after you throughout their generations, an everlasting covenant. So, so this is... What, what Enting was saying about New Covenant, just seeing it as typology, this flies in the face of that. This is like a direct contradiction. It's not just ty typology. This is, this is a, a time reference. This is permanent. It's an eternal covenant. Okay, look at the, look at the participants. So we have God. And this is, this is Abraham, this is God, and then this is the offspring, and then this is generations. <laughs> now look at this here. You ready for this? This is next level, okay? I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout the, their generations for everlasting co co covenant. Look at this. Look at this here. This is the big one. This is the biggie. To be God to you and to your offspring after you. So this is, I will be your God and you will be my people. Does everyone see that? This is so powerful here. So let's look at object here. So this is your God, my people. So the relationship between being your God and my people is covenant. Literally what the Westminster Confession says. And I'm not saying Westminster Confession is inspired. I'm saying the Westminster Confession is literally just quoting what the word of God says. Most importantly is if you want to be in relationship with God, you have to be in covenant with him. Does everyone see that? And it's, and it's permanent. I mean, this is not small stuff. And so here I asked someone who said he was a, a traditional covenantal, but he was, you know, more, I think he was more new covenant. And I asked him if the, if the Abrahamic covenant was still, was still for us today. And he said, no, it's just a type that's fulfilled in the new covenant. And I was like, that that's the difference. That's the difference. So Enting, I really appreciate highlighting that, drawing our attention. I really appreciate that. Um, and then of course, here you have, you have nations, you have Gentiles here, Gentiles. So the, the plan was always Gentiles, okay? Big idea, though. Big idea. I don't want to get... We're going to come back to this. You guys are taking me off track. Come on. Here we go. Big idea, though, is that Abrahamic covenant. I mean, we're literally going through major points of Scripture, and it's including, like, everybody. Now, here it's just believers, but still. Let's move on here. Genesis 17, 19. So now we have God confirms his covenant with Isaac. So now we have we had Noah. Abraham, Isaac, God said, this is just one example of many. There's, there's more that, that refer to Isaac. God said, but uh, no, but Sarah, your wife shall bear a son and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. We got, this is my covenant with Isaac, right? And this is it's the same, right? Time reference everlasting covenant and it's for his offspring. So my question is, are there two covenants? Is there a covenant with Abraham and a covenant with Isaac? Are there two or one covenants? Ah, uh, someone's saying one. 
So even though God establishes another covenant with Isaac, we recognize it's within Abrahamic covenant. So let's just be clear. So let's, let's write this out. We're going to come back here. I'm just wetting your whistle right now. You're getting, you're getting your money's worth right here. You have Abrahamic covenant. You have Isaac covenant. One, one plus one equals one. <laughs> But what I'm trying to get at is that these these are, if you want to call them like an expansion or a, a confirming. So this is so so now if we're going to say that these two are still just the Abrahamic covenant, of course the text mentions this. But already we're dealing with theological structures. Does everyone see that? We're saying that the we're saying that these two are one. So already we're dealing in the realm of of theology. Is everyone tracking there with me? Does that make sense? If we can see continuity and Abraham and Isaac are one, then maybe we can do that with Jacob too. We'll see. And then maybe it makes sense when, when God promises David another offspring, maybe that's still also part of this Abrahamic covenant. And then we're, we're looking at higher structures and then it makes sense because if all this is fulfilled in Christ, maybe the covenant of grace is becoming a little more attractive. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay. Any questions or comments? Is that making sense? Okay. I hope everyone can see that here. Okay. So let's just read it. And then you can see what I'm saying here. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are on all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Okay. So, so this is, this is what, this is what Enting is drawing our attention to that the covenant is forever. So this is not, this is, this is eternal. And look at this for a thousand generations. Now watch this. You ready for this? The covenant he made with Abraham. Covenant he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. So everyone can see this is, this is very, there's a lot of continuity here. And I would say Enting, this is probably the strongest, one of the strongest cases for not seeing a republication because the everlasting covenant to Israel, this is the, the Mosaic covenant. And it's, it's, it's within, it's within the Abrahamic, it's very much within the covenant of grace. So there's definitely a, a, a works principle that we can refer to, and there is analogy 100% with, with Adam. But at the same time, Israel's covenant is fundamentally that of grace. It's more fundamental of grace than of works. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and really there's that, we want to see we want to see a multifaceted picture. I think we try to reduce it down to just one picture or one aspect, we're going to fail. The big point, the big takeaway here, though, is that the, this is the confirmation with Jacob, and it's all just considered one covenant. <laughs> it's just one. Uh, so this is God makes a covenant with Moses and with the people of Israel. You are standing today, all of you, before the Lord your God, the tribes of your, uh, the heads of your tribes, your elders, your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, your sojourners, from the one who chops your wood to the one who draws your water so that you may enter into a sworn covenant with the Lord your God, which the Lord your God is making with you today, that he may establish you as his people so that he may be your God. Look at this here. So my goodness, look at this here. This is the goal. His people, your God. Covenant. Is everyone tracking there with me? As he swore to your father's, Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. It is not with you alone that I'm making this sworn covenant. But whoever is standing with us today forever, the Lord our God, and with whoever is not here with us today. So this is, let's write down the people here. We got here, who we have. So this is with you. How do we define this? Heads of your tribes, elders, officers, men, little ones. Wives, sojourners, the, the one who chops the wood. And then this is 
whoever is not with us today. So again, my, my point is describing the pervasiveness of covenant. So we have created order. We have Adam and all his posterity. We have Noah, all his posterity. We have Abraham, all his posterity. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, old covenant, literally everyone at that time and moving forward, right? So up until the coming of Christ, it's, 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 it's like, it's, it's so comprehensive. So any other framework falls short. So I'm just trying to convince us we should all be, I hope that after this first session zero, zero, we're, we can all call ourselves covenant theologians. Not that we're, we're experts, but that for, we're approaching the scripture from a covenantal framework. That's what I'm trying to convince you of today. Uh, any questions or comments? Is that making sense so far? So this is really comprehensive. And, and, and for us, this is going to be applied, we're going to see later in the semester, to the church. And so whenever we see to be his people, your God, my people, our God, that's covenantal language. That's covenantal language already. That's describing the fundamental agreement of the covenant. God establishes a covenant with Eleazar concerning the priesthood. So, I mean, this is, if this isn't even just, this isn't even just uh, <laughs> the people. Look at this. Uh, Numbers 25, 10 to 13. And the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the people of Israel that in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the people of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore, I say, behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, right? So there's that peace language I told you about, right? So the God of peace, may the God of peace equip you, right? I give to him my covenant of peace and it shall be to him and to his descendants after him, a covenant of perpetual priesthood. So here we have the priests, they want to be in the ministry. <laughs> They're in the covenant. God makes a covenant with them, right? So it's like, this is how God interacts. This is how God condescends and interacts with his people. The way in which God condescends through the means of covenant. I think, I think we're being convinced here. Psalm 89, verse 3. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built forever. In the heavens, you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever. I will build your throne for all generation. I think the point's been proven already. Now with the, with the King David, you have steadfast love of the covenant. You have his covenants been made with David. It's sworn. Even thinking about parallel terms here, we could say make a covenant. If, if God is swearing, these are also synonyms. Does everyone see that? So he could say he makes a covenant or if he's sworn a promise, that's, a, that's synonymous. That's covenantal language. Okay. And specifically it's the building of, it's the building of the throne. Okay. And then all generations. So this is already, this is time references here. Okay. Time references. Okay, let's move on here. I, now we're looking at Isaiah 24, 5. And if ever there was a doubt that the covenant of Adam was just for Adam, this will correct it. <laughs> the earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws. They have violated the statutes. They have broken the everlasting covenant. Which covenant? Whose covenant? Let's just highlight some things here. This is the object here. The object has been defiled. This is the action. And so it's under its inhabitants. So really the, the actors here, the means. So let's just be clear here. The, the, the actors are, let's, let's rewrite this. So this is, let's rewrite this actively, okay? The inhabitants defiled the earth. So if ever you're struggling with how to explain or define something, rewrite it. 
The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. The inhabitants defile the earth. So then they are the actors now. They have transgressed the laws. They have violated the statutes. They have broken the everlasting covenant. And so this is why here, look at this, everyone. You have to see a covenant of works with Adam. You can't say that they've broken. This can't be the Noahic covenant because the Noahic covenant only established very specific things. He would never curse, and he did establish the mandate not to kill, but that was it. And so there's a greater covenant that's going on beyond the Noahic covenant. It's the Adamic covenant, the covenant of works. And so within the covenant of works is the covenant of the mandate of creation, the laws of creation. This goes to what Pastor Enting is saying. This is like so fundamental. And, but here now, what we have to consider is that Adam and offspring. So the covenant, the covenant of works is still binding for all the offspring. We're not alleviated from the covenant of works. We're, we're under the curse, but we still have to abide by the law. And so how do we define the law? Right. And so then this comes back to Enting's comparison with the Mosaic law, right? The Mosaic law contains this, the same substance, loving God and loving others, right? You see how everything's intermingled. Does everyone see that? And so this, yeah, I would really follow. <laughs> I'd really follow. It's Malakas. It's very Malakas. It, it'll make the gospel so much easier to preach when you recognize a covenant of works and that we're all bound. Every one of us are bound to the covenant of works right now. So you can go out and, and, and bring the Mosaic law and say, you are breaking the Mosaic law right now. Not that the, not that the covenant is still binding, but it's the Mosaic law contains the eternal law of God. The covenant of works contains the eternal law of God. It's in that, it's in that mandate. And we're going to get more into the weeds. Right now, I just want us to see that presuppositionally, Looking at this text, the only way that it makes sense is that this is eternally binding and it's for all of us, all of mankind, okay? Isaiah 42. So now this is talking about the servant of the Lord. My goodness. Like, this is like, are you kidding me? The servant of the Lord, Isaiah 42, 6. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand. I will keep you. I will give you a covenant as a covenant for the people, a light to the nations. So this servant of the Lord is, this is going to be uh, Jesus. And so we can look at, we can look at all these things. All I want to say right now is there's an agreement with God's servant, who is Jesus, that he's going to be a covenant, not just for the Jews, but also for the people. So this is why the Jews totally missed it, right? Because their Messiah was going to be a covenant for all people. Here. God promises a new covenant with Israel. So, so Israel's failed, messed the whole thing up. Look at this here. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the, the house of Judah. So there's a new covenant coming, okay? And there's details. We're going to unpack that. Watch this now. So this is there's a new covenant coming with Israel. And then at the Passover, right before Christ's crucifixion, Likewise, the cup after they'd eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So this is Lord's, the Lord's Supper. So this comes down to a fundamental question I want to ask. If you're still dispensational or maybe new covenant, God's going to make a new covenant with Israel, and then that blood that's poured out is is in Christ's blood and the for you, that's the apostles of the church. So my question is, fundamentally, is the new covenant postponed? It's just going to come in some, I guess, in some distant future, or is it now in effect? And <laughs> the reality is we celebrate the new covenant every month. We celebrate it every month, brothers and sisters. And so um, 
I hope maybe this takes on new significance for you when you worship and celebrate the ordinance, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so let's look at Luke 22. In, in Jeremiah 31, we have the promise of the new covenant. And so here we have the explicit statement of the new covenant. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. We have a reference to the new covenant here. There's a location that's going on. This is the sphere. Big idea, though, is that this is the, this is the new covenant. What is the activity that's going on here? What, where, where, how do we celebrate this? Lord's Supper. Lord's Supper. Come on. Lord's Supper. Once a month in the church. So this is the big thing. All the debate comes down to with, with covenant theology is, okay, well, you've just described all the Old Testament as covenantal. Okay, fine. We'll give you that, Tim. You know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, Israel is fine. Okay, fine. All right. Maybe we're under the old, uh, we're under the, the, the Adamic curse in the Passover meal. Once a month in our churches, we celebrate the new covenant. Whatever else, we are within the new covenant. All right? And that pretty much describes the entire world, all time, all people, everywhere. Okay? Everyone sees that? So we, we, we got the whole shebang. The, the whole law has, the whole world, the inhabitants of the world, earth have broken the everlasting covenant. We have the, the new covenant now in the church. We need to be coming from a covenantal. It should not be debated. We need to be coming from a covenantal framework. We are all within one or two or three of these covenants. Okay, now I'm, we're going to argue for the covenant of grace. We're all in the covenant of grace. Okay, so we're all, we are, we are, we are no longer in Adam. We are, we are now in the covenant of grace with Christ. That's where we're going to. Now I have, I have a sneak attack. This is the last one. This is a sneak attack for all of us because there is debate on the covenant of redemption. People argue with the covenant of redemption. For those of you who are, are knowledgeable, you're reading books. Maybe you've read Christ in the Covenants. Um, Robertson, does not ex op Robert, uh, Robertson does not accept the covenant of redemption. Um, it's speculative. I have the last passage for us to consider here. Luke twenty two twenty eight. This is Jesus speaking. This was a revelation for me. I just recently discovered this. I was going crazy. Okay, so this, you know, we were all learning here in this class. I'm learning too. Okay, 100%. Here we go. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials. I will assign to you as my father assigned to me a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Now, this is where it's a plug. We're going to do, I've pro been promising Greek and Hebrew. We're going to do Greek and Hebrew one day. Watch this, brothers and sisters. This is somewhat of a poor translation. You know what this word actually is in Greek? This is the verb covenant. <laughs> so I, I covenant with you, literally, I covenant with you as my father covenanted with me. Now, to make it, make it sound right, we translate it assigned or gave. But the word literally used is the Greek word verb for diatheke. It's diatithemai, which is covenanted. I will covenant. I am covenanting with you as my father covenanted with, with me. And so saying this is Messiah will not do. This is Jesus Christ as son. This is sonship right here. When Jesus refers to the father, this is the father-son relationship. So this is talking about the covenant of redemption, and it's explicit. So I don't want to hear none of this. Like, oh, well, the covenant of redemption is so speculative. It never refers to the word covenant. No, it's here. It's here. Literally, there's an agreement between the father and the son, a covenant. The father, the son is going to be faithful to the cross to redeem a people. The father is going to give him a kingdom. Bam. Come on. All right. So.